Big dogs, let's start the mission of all missions underneath of this car. Okay, so basically with these impressors you get a couple of spots where rust's pretty prevalent uh, or prevalent really, so it'll there's certain sections to look out for when you're buying them and stuff like that, just to see because they can, they've been known to be like rust buckets and stuff really, so you need to get underneath the car and have a look at just a couple of spots and if you see an excessive rust and stuff that you think's gone through, then you just walk away from them. But mine, so basically on those hatches, sort of like the last, just where the rear wheels are, just in front of them, in the bottom of the chassis on like the two ends, I'll, I'll describe it to you obviously in the video because that was a pretty terrible description. Basically, the paint will start to come off there, or at least that sort of like underbody sort of seal. Basically, the paint will start going away and it'll start rusting there. And I don't know if it's to do with like stone chips coming up or what it is, but just they just tend to start rusting there going quite a lot. So on mine, if it's if I if I remember correctly, when I looked under mine, it, it was just a little bit exposed and stuff, and rust hadn't really started setting. And if it was, it was just slightly. You know, a bit of surface rust. So what we're going to do today is we're going to try and well, we're not going to try nothing. We're doing this. This is this is happening. It's going to be a mission, but we're going to do it. And and as you'll see, like when we get underneath the car, it won't. Be, it's not rust free. It's like on oh, my WRX was my WRX was amazing, but I think that car just get, the the previous one just like he garaged the car and it was really looked after in the, in that way probably not driven in the winters and stuff because that was like extremely good that's why i paid it you know top dollar for that one when i got it at that time it's just such good condition now this this one you can see has been driven more or whatever there's a lot of places where there's surface rust but you have to treat it you can't a lot of people just chuck underbody seal over the top of it and you put the rust converter on i've got a video where i put some like where i've worked to the bit away and then i put rust converter on but even then I've, I've stepped away from the from the from just putting the rust converter and stuff and i prefer to get straight down to bare metal not like totally and then if you think you've gone down to bare metal and it could be like you know micro like little pinholes with rust and that you think you, you haven't got go ahead and chuck some rust converter on there if you want to but if there's anything behind that and it doesn't get through those layers you're just going to have the same problem years later so what I try and do is now is I try and like get it all back and then I use a rust remover, like a gel or something. Because when you're under the car, you want it to stay there, you, you know, so the gels are better. And then you might have to do a couple of applications and stuff like that. But we'll go down. If Let's say it's like if you do your car underneath and just the underbody seals come off, like that sort of protective rubberized stuff that even the factory sort of provides. And there's still body paint underneath and it hasn't rusted through then what you do is you just scuff that slightly chuck some underbody seal on it and that's you but ours is going to be a little more in depth than that and a few more missions you know how we do love it so i've got my little can of um the same as body color paints it's been made and matched like as best possible because under the car i don't care about a total perfect match but what we're going to do is we're going to do etch primer if i go down to the metal and then we'll do another primer over the top probably and then yeah the the factory colored paint and um, i think i'm probably going to clear coat it too and then scuff the clear coat and then chuck the i might not even scuff the clear coat to be fair i might chuck on like a hammerite sort of underbody seal that, that'll stick to it anyway it's more of like a like a tarry rubberized doesn't really dry properly I, I like that because if the stones bump up and hit it it shouldn't chip the paint and stuff it should just like a uh, bounce off and stuff like that and still create a nice seal for the for the winters okay well yeah stick with me and uh, like i say guys it's going to be a pretty big series i can think because i'm not going to stop at just that section i'm going to do a lot more a lot of other sections where there's rust and stuff like that it's a big project but stick with me and watch let's do it okay big dogs let's get under this monster door of the restorer straight back at you yeah let's have fun okay so we've had to go a little bit Unconventional. Well, it's conventional, but unconventional for me. I don't normally use these these ramps, but I ain't a scientist either. But that that doesn't look good, right? That'd be a bend right there. But hey ho, you know, we'll check the spider out, beast. You want to see the fangs on this monster, bro? It's dead now. We'll check the fangs on that, bro. What a beast. Okay, so let's get under here quick. Show you guys what it gives. It's a bit hard to camera struggle with the lighting and stuff like that when it's quite yeah when it's quite bright outside 
the camera cries a little bit. But what we will try and do is I'm going to show you what we'll attack today. Okay. It's just me shimmery, shimmering under here, guys. Okay, so there we go. Can you see that? See that bit there? That's like exposed sort of that bit of paint there. And then here as well. So this is what will normally go on your car. You see this sort of factory under seal that's here? That starts to chip away. So we're gonna go, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna fix that. There's other bits as you can see, there's that bit down. I might attack that today, but I doubt it. I wanna do a pretty good job here. What I won't be doing guys, which is what I would recommend doing if you've got a different form of picking the car up, because then you can remove the wheel and stuff. I, I can't do that where I currently am with regards to the angle and stuff like that. I'll try and show you. But what you would do here, right, is I'm only gonna go to the rim. I'm gonna go all around the or all around the edge of that. There's plastic there, right? So you 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 know there's probably gonna be or there will be like rusty bits hiding behind there. We know that wouldn't have taken stone chips, but the way the rust works is it's gonna work its way behind that stuff. But what we're gonna do here is we're gonna tackle this, bring this all off, bring this all back here, see how far the rust has got. It's only tiny surface rust now, but trust me, this will be a gaping hole in a few years. So yeah, we'll take that bit off. I want to restore like the whole back end of this thing, but it's just, you know, with regards to me starting out and doing this, it's better to just attack these small parts first that are, you know, visual and exposed and just, just get these problem areas. Now these are the biggest problem areas on these cars, one of. So yes, yeah, so I'll attack that. It's exactly the same on the other side. It goes quite far down the trim, so I'm going to go a little bit, I'm going to go quite deep into it. And just remove as much as I can, chuck some paint on. But like I say, the plastics won't be coming off. Might drop the side skirts, might drop those side skirts slightly so I can get so I can get behind them. But yeah, just stick with me and we'll um yeah, we'll start taking some of this back. Look at how good that that stuff is, that castrol stuff. Still on all the bolts and everything, and I've been driving it around check. It leaves like lots of dirt clings to it, but it won't rust and stuff. Creates a nice barrier from the elements. But check cooler yeah so all the sort of prep works done we can start getting under it but this is what i want to try and show you the guys of the rubbish that sits in these side sills and stuff look at that it's all that mud and stuff now obviously the plastic doesn't rust but when that sits in there it starts to create all sorts of corrosion and stuff so what we're going to do is we're going to go majority yeah we'll try and get uh, let's get some focus here yeah so we're going to try and get all this bit off all of this We'll figure it out. Time consuming, but it'll be worth it. Okay, so Big Dog's tool of the trade today is going to be this. We're going to go with, that'll remove like paint and stuff. I'm going to go sand, sandpaper first. So let's get under this monster and figure out what's kicking off. Okay. We've got our safety on safety here. This is going to be a task and a half, big dogs. Task and a half. You know I got my glasses on. Do you done that? Okay, so let's get a little camera set up here. Oh, we might go with the other side, depending on how this does with the light. I just want to see something. Ex Experimente. Oh, don't ignore that exhaust. Nah, it's no better. See how it's trying to bring in that light from behind. I need to show you guys this stuff live and direct. Okay. Okay. Let's try and get you guys set up. Yes, the big dogs. Get ready for me to bring the noise. I'll try and show you. Maybe I can hold it. Nope, that looks absolutely terrible for me. I am. Okay, big dogs, give me a sec, let me figure this out. Okay, well this poor camera cannot stand this light. So, we're just going to go with it anyway. We love and direct. Coming straight at you. Trying to get underneath the car. Because, let's be honest, I've not stopped eating. So this ain't getting no easier getting under this monster. But you ready for the the whizzing? Cause it's about to kick off dogs. 
straight to the middle bro. See, so I could use a, you could chuck a, um, what is it, like a rust remover on there if you want to, but it ain't, it ain't gonna, this is gonna be much quicker just to knock all this rubbish off, watch. Let's get the speed down, we're on turbo here. Let's get us down a couple of RPM here. Oh, it's too grippy. Too grippy. Ah. Let's try and get you with a little bit of more for the juicy stuff. You can see the way the sort of tar tar nature of this stuff is um is starting to like go into the metal and stuff so what I'll need to do is clean that back a little bit I might use one of those other attachments I just want to knock off this the real crusty stuff first you can see it hasn't gone too deep so it's still safe here we, we, we're not we're not at um there's no need for tears yet so it's not that bad Oh, what dog that is. This thing's got some power, bro. This thing will kick back in me. It's got a donkey kick, bro. I should be wearing some gloves. Right should I go get my gloves on? Yeah, let's go put my gloves on, big dogs. Okay, we're back. I gave you guys, I got you guys another attachment to check. See, so I've got this, it looks like sort of foamy, but it's like a scouring pad if I could describe that to you properly. This one will actually, I think, maybe do a lot better work on this rubbery stuff. You'll see. How come I've got got these um, glasses on and something still managed to whack me in the eye? Yeah. Yeah, guys, try not to um, yeah touch the plastic there like I just did, like a bonehead. And you want to try and like not bump other bits of the car that still have this coating on. Least damage as possible. I won't bore you guys with this whole process, but you can sort of see what we're getting at here. And then I'm going to get this nice and bare for you, and then I'm going to show you what the rust stuff that I put on as well. Just to get that last bit of rust. But basically with me, I, I you know I won't put nothing on unless it's bare, bare metal. And I hit that with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol afterwards. Clean it all up, get it the best I can so that I can get paint on this. Because trust me, paint ain't sticking to that rubber stuff. I'll tell you that for free. Okay, big dogs. I just had a brainstorm. What we're going to do is we're going to launch this on the other side of the car. And then you're going to see if it's worth even doing the bit that I'm doing, like all the sanding and stuff. So we'll let this bit dwell. So this is the gel. We'll let the gel dwell, as they say, <laughs> you know. Let me get back under the car, get this painting stuff in the right place, and then we'll go from Okay, so big dogs, let's get our painting and decorating on. Okay, so we've got our, got this gel. Okay, so now with this stuff too, you put this on paint, big dogs, it ain't gonna do it any good. So don't go putting this on stuff that you can see. Okay, so what you would do here, see when it's quite crusty, you try and knock some of that back. You wouldn't do it around just a day, big dark. And just, yeah, basically put it straight on. You want to knock off. And you would use a wire brush, you wouldn't do what I'm doing here. Because this is called hashtag lazy shit. Yeah. But, 
I'm probably going to hit it still with the sander anyway. But we'll just see how much it gets it off. Yeah, just be careful with this stuff, it'll burn and that. Not instantaneous, but... This is that lose your eyeball stuff, you know? You can see it, see it reacting. Oh, big dogs! Try and see if we can show you that bubbly bubbly right there. See that bubbly bubbly? That's the rust getting munched up. Yeah. Let's get you a little bit more of that action right there. And now what you, what you would do with this, that, well what I do anyway, is I don't just treat this as the one and done. I'll, I'll, put a, I'll do a coat, come back, wipe it off, and put another coat on. So I normally do when I use this stuff. Yeah, but be careful because it'll start eating up other stuff, yeah? I've warned you. But we'll see. We'll see how good it goes. Oh, we don't want to lose it, bro. But yeah, you get the just and then you paint the rest of it up and go from there. Okay guys, full on painting and decorating course completed here. <laughs> you can already see the colour changing. So I may, you know this may be silly for me to start keep sanding the other side of the car. I mean even for myself, I think I'm going to see how, how well this turns out. You know, because this might knock back a lot of the, a lot of the rust. I mean, I've, it's for me, it's got to be absolutely rust-free. But you can see where I've sort of painted the stuff all the way down the side of the sill there. I've painted this bracket here that was all rusty. I'm going to keep going, obviously. Try and look. You see inside there. I'll try and get all in there and stuff like that. But you sort of get the just. I'm not going to paint these, like parts that bolt up because those I want to remove totally and then get them. Um, Maybe chemically dipped or something, or just work on them myself while they're off the car. I really need to drop this rear subframe, as you guys can probably tell. So yes, yeah, so I want to just try and get that paintbrush up in there. And I think this chemical, I know, is going to ruin all of this other rubber sealant here. So what I'll do is I'll knock all this stuff back. And that's where the sander and that might come back in. So I'll knock all that back. Make sure there's no rust. If I knock it back to bare metal, we're going to put the edge primer on, do that whole process, paint it and everything. And yeah, and then we chuck the hammerite underbody seal in a couple of days or once the paint's like degassed and all that kind of stuff, all the gas has come out of it. We'll chuck that stuff on because it is quite cool to have this rubberized coating on just with that sort of because that, that, that provides you with the high impact stuff, to be honest. So, yeah, so you guys have seen all this now. Let's give it like half an hour to dwell and then we'll come back and let's actually see how it comes out. Okay, so hopefully, you got the old focus going. So I'm not going to exaggerate to you guys, this is a extremely, extremely slow process. Very, very slow. The whole the whole thing, like just all the prep work and all that kind of stuff, it's just... Yeah, it takes ages. But like I say, we're starting with the chemical bit now. Let me try and show you guys exactly what I'm going to hit here, so... Let me try and get all that. So, this is what you would do. Properly. Just bubbles are there's rust behind that so we need to get rid of that. okay so that's that why we'll this will this is clearly isn't strong enough I'm just gonna go and hit that all just just to have a look around and then that that's gonna be a little 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 quick touch with the sander and we'll put that chemical on and we'll go from there but you want to get all these bits because these are the bits that are just gonna destroy the thing and you know I love this beast. Guys, check this out. You don't, you don't need to... I've got a good feeling about this. 
about doing this chemical and um, not totally sanding back. I mean, obviously you see where the crusty stuff is, you're gonna have to use a sander like I did. But you guess all right. Okay, it's spreading, the, it's spreading this rubber stuff a little bit. But what you do is you just hit that little bit of rubber, just see how far. Oh, the noise, sorry. Apologies for that, big dogs. It's gonna come in again, so just turn that, turn that volume down, okay? We're going in. Okay, you get the gist. You probably can't even see that because of the glare. That's what we're going to be doing, hitting this a little bit more, getting all this crusty stuff off, putting the chemical on. I'm not going to be touching it with the sander yet again. So you can see where I touched it back there, but I'm just going to hit, hit it with this a little bit and get all the crustiness off. And then we'll chuck the chemical on, and then we'll go from there. Because I don't, we don't want, this is a long process, I don't, I, I don't care how long it takes to be honest. But neither do I want to make tons of work for myself either. If you guys get the gist of it. So yeah, so we'll hit all this, clean all this up as best I can, chuck the chemical on and let's just see what we get. Let's see how quickly we can get to this bare metal. Not quickly, but let's just see how we get there. Big dogs. Okay, big dog is still a little bit more painting decorating here. Let's get some of this croissant stuff on here. Let's get some of this rust off here, bruh. Yeah, don't I wouldn't put the stuff on my paint as far as you because it's not it's not great, but I was gonna hit that with the sander, but what I'm gonna do is just hit this now. I'm gonna see what type of damage it will do to the paint just so you guys can see. Testing purposes, you know. So I don't wanna go that's all the exposed paint there. I don't wanna be doing that because my my paint job under here is not gonna be worth seeing, trust me. I don't think it's gonna look great. And um, this part, you know, when I paint this, this isn't going to have under seal on it, but the bit underneath will afterwards, so the finish doesn't really... It's got to be sealing nicely, it's got to do do the job with regards to paint, like actually protecting it. But the finish won't matter when the underbod under seal's on it. Just put it on quite thick so it can keep doing its stuff. Okay, so we're going to put a wire brush attachments so now we're going to go try and knock off all of that I've got a couple more but we're going to try and get in there and knock off that anti-rust or that gel the rust remover gel try and get all that off we can you can wipe it down and stuff it's a little bit harder to wipe down I'm just going to try with this wire brush and see what it gives so I'm not sure how well you guys can see this but this is what I'm going around and doing now so I'm going that wire we get that attachment let's see if you can see so as you can see it's like knocking back those bits just try it. Hello. If we focus that'd be great. Okay, there. okay cool. So you can see this. Let's try and show you that. See the bubbles? Let me hit that quick. Show you. There we go. There you go. So you take the bubbles off and you see the rust underneath. That bit does not like it, but yeah. So I'm just gonna go and keep that going. And once I've got all this back to sort of bare metal-ish, it will before I put a second coat of that anti-rust stuff. I'll record and show you guys. Big dogs, I'm an absolute mess. Just darts everywhere, just rubbish. Absolutely everywhere. Okay, let's have a look at what we got so far. Okay. I'm just showing you this bit, just because it's better to see how I'm going here. Okay, so what have I done? So I've ended up going wire, wire brush, and then I've ended up just sanding it, and then I've used one of these sort of scarring pad types. It removes paint and stuff, but it's doing a pretty, pretty sufficient job at removing this. Okay, so what I'm doing here, I'm getting rid of as much of the surface rust as possible. And then I'm going to put some more, probably, of that chemical again. Hello camera, let's play the game. Yes, I'll put some more of that, more of that chemical on that, and then wipe the chemical off. And then we'll put some primer on, but just give me time, this is a long process. And the whole thing about this is to try and 
I'm trying to see if I can show you underneath. The whole point about this is just, just to, to take your time. So this underneath here now, that's all just wire wheel and stuff. So it's pretty cool. That does, to be honest, that didn't actually have that much rust. I, I just took that um, that rubber that rubber under seal back. I just took it back quite far, just to see what see what I'm working with. Go all along those seams and stuff. You want to got to be really really careful. You want to get every every ounce of rust out of there. This is how you underseal properly. So yeah, stick with me superstars, we'll get there, we'll get there. Door of the Restorer, straight coming back at you. You know how we roll, no messing about superstars, big dog. Okay, let's do a little bit of painting, a little bit of decorating here. So as you can see, it looks like it's all gone, but I always just put this on just for that little bit of extra. Because basically when you Oh gosh, come on camera. Come on. Let's try and get this camera right. So yeah, basically, theory of it is, basically when you're sanding away and blasting all these bits, all the residue, all that the rust and stuff, goes and settles on that bare metal. You can see it, can you see it bubbling? Can you see it bubbling or not really? So that's reacting with. Well, probably the paint to be honest <laughs> it's meant to be doing to the rust too but I'll go around and I'll paint all this up now and just let it sit there it, I think it's because of the chemical and stuff I think it'll etch into the metal as well but I don't use this as a base coat you can it tells you it says you can but I don't I just clean this off clean it all off and then I put a proper edge primer down but you guys get the picture right so I'm gonna go around paint all that all the bare metal and let that rack again, kill up all the rust, whatever's left behind, and then wipe that all off, and then we'll fill it with some edge primer. Okay, so this is the second second bit of the rust remover. So that's all removed now, and I have gone and washed it. Well, washed it. Oh, come on, focus. Yeah. Oh, if you can't find it. Grind it, bruh. Grind that gear. I think I'll tell them to go pick up their gearbox in a sec. Yeah, so pretty cool, huh? We need to get you guys some of that high definition. So, so that's all now cleaned with isopropyl alcohol. And you can see there's no rust left there. So that's pretty cool, huh? Now, because it's pretty dry, I'm not really panicking. So there's my little painting and decorating brush. So... Let's show you guys what I found the most useful. So pretty much, this is cool if you want to knock off, like wire, wire brushes, cool if you need to knock off underseal, but in my opinion, and, and if you've got crusty rust just to get the big flakes off, but in my opinion, it's not really needed that much. It filled me full of crap as well, I ain't gonna lie. So I've just got some, like the, the grades of the sandpaper were better for me. This is, this is, these are okay, these are, these are pretty cool. You can flick between these sort of scouring, sort of paint removing pads. You can use some of them, they, they work. But I've just found good old sandpaper, different grades has, has helped me a lot. I'll show you the other side, the way I'm progressing. I think we might do a, might do a part one and part two video here, big dogs. Because it is a lot, a lot of work. This has taken me, just to do that one side, has taken me, oh, sorry guys, busy moving around here. So that, that one side over there has taken me the day, pretty much the whole day, just to get it to that point. So you can see, so now, this is what I do, so now I'll knock through this, and, and guys, to get in like these nooks and crannies, and get the sandpaper in there and stuff, that's where the wire wheel can be a bit, like can be quite useful, because you can get it in those little gaps. But it doesn't really get the rust away, if that makes sense, so that's the chemical sanding, chemical sanding, and then... That's what I keep doing, I do that process really. But you've got to get in everywhere. Now, I'm lucky that these these bits here are gonna be covered by a you know by the side skirt. Not in the sense that I'm gonna leave them them bare, but I'm going to you know my, my, my painting my the, the finish doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. So what I do is I'll scuff it so I'll clean all this area up, obviously this will be gone. I don't know if I'm going to, I might just sand 
just a little bit a little bit back here so I can just paint like a, a nice patch and then try and tie it into the current paint. I mean the paint underneath the car is dull anyway. I mean yeah it's a little bit dirty but that finish isn't going to be seen so if there's a little little mark there where you can see I've done it it does it doesn't really doesn't bother me as long as I know the rust is gone. So yeah superstars what are we saying? Do we have a little look? Oh we need to redo these as well. Check the state of these things that destroyed I ain't gonna be doing that. That we sent me away. Okay big dogs what do I even look like? An absolute hot mess. Yeah, so let's. So, shall we leave that? Yeah, let's leave this as. We'll do this as a part one. And then part two. Obviously, I'll get the second. The second side ready for you guys. So, part two will be the priming. And then the painting. And then we'll underseal as well. But just underseal those patches. We need to. We need to keep in mind that if I drop this rear subframe and stuff at some point, I want to know where I've done already. Look, I could just go wild and then redo the whole lot, like, you know, remove all the under seal and do it again. But at least now I know there's not going to be extra rust, like, introduced and stuff like that. I just can't stand seeing, like, the bare metal there exposed and then not putting in work on it. And then you end up with a rust bucket, you know? And then these people, like, under sealing over it and stuff and just doing a rubbish job. It takes time. It's worth it. These cars are precious. They're nice. And, yeah. You've got to keep the Subaru game alive, big dogs. So, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. I am in pain but Dora the Restorer is he, I'm still out here I'm still out here in the heat cooking it up with these check these spectacles big dog say what these things are but what but pow pow oh, top class okay superstars thanks for tuning in we're getting our subscribers up we're getting our views up which is how we roll big dogs loving it big dogs gonna chuck a bit of this edge primer on I just want to see if it will I just want to see if it's gonna actually actually stick. We'll give it a cup. Give it a while. Just want to see. I don't know what we're gonna do with the this camera because it's a bit too close to be honest. But we'll just give it. I'm just gonna give it a quick spray. Show you guys. We've just got our Helford's Edge Primer here. Just gonna put a light, a light little dusting. You guys will get the gist. But I don't. Oh, I don't want to blow back into the camera. So hold on. Actually, try and. Just show you guys what I mean. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. L literally, give it a dust, blend it in. You can see a bit of dirt in that, but I've gone with alcohol wipes, but with um, isopropyl alcohol all the way around here. I don't care if I get dust in the paint, to be honest. But it should be okay. Okay, so there we go. Edge prime is on. I leave that overnight. I don't really want to leave the exposed metal, to be honest. Overnight, all that hardware getting the rust off. So, yeah, let's get that on, and then, yeah, revisit it tomorrow.